100,000 Hurricane Katrina victims got road home grants to rebuild and reoccupy their own homes, and they used the money to do just that. They did, but David Hammer's investigation found the state is using the fine print in the grant agreements to sue thousands of those homeowners. Tonight in part two of Disaster After Disaster, David looks at how he got here and what the state of Louisiana is doing to avoid disaster after disaster now and in the future. Sherilyn Davis says her life has been disaster after disaster. She built a new house in April 2005, but only because she collected insurance when her son Melvin was killed in a drive-by shooting. And I preferred my son instead of a house, but it was something. Then on August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina destroyed it. And I mean, it wiped it away. The water went all the way up to the ceiling to the roof halfway, then it came halfway and sat in the middle of the house. And then came something thousands of Louisiana homeowners consider the disaster after the disaster, the state's road home grant program. The state got more than $11 billion from the federal government to help 119,000 homeowners rebuild their homes. But many found their road home grants were not enough to rebuild, and Davis says unscrupulous contractors made off with $20,000, a problem many homeowners encountered after Katrina. I had just lost my son, I just lost my house, and so, I mean, different people coming to you, to your door, giving you cards and stuff, so I took a card and took a chance, and the guy ran out with my money. She thought it was good news when the road home supplemented her rebuilding grant with $30,000 to elevate her house to a safer height. But that extra money only put her further in the hole. One guy told me it was gonna cost 100 and some thousand. And so I was like, hey, 100 and some thousand. I said, all they give me is 30,000. The state and federal government acknowledged this was a major problem and changed the road home rules in 2013 to make it okay to use the elevation funds on repairing a home instead of lifting it. And that's what Davis did. But there was one requirement she could not meet. I have misplaced some of my receipts. Receipts. That's Davis reading from a letter she wrote to the state in 2014. Without receipts to prove how she spent the 30000 Louisiana sued Davis in 2020, seeking to take back the $30,000 elevation grant. And the state is doing the same to 3,500 other homeowners, too. The feds say most of those who failed to elevate were low-income or elderly and couldn't afford it. Davis told the state she was one of them in her 2014 letter. I only get $720 once a month. So why did this happen? Former Louisiana Recovery Chief Paul Rainwater says one problem was the road home's ever-changing rules. We had 200 amendments to the plan, but there had to be because, you know, no one had ever done this before and the situation was so different than anyone had ever dealt with. Yeah. So it was a very difficult time. But Louisiana's governor during Katrina, the late Kathleen Blanco, told me in a 2013 interview that the road home wouldn't have caused this many problems if it had been able to pay grants the way she designed it, in installments as repairs were completed. Much like if you're making a loan at the bank to build a house. But the feds told Blanco in March 2007, if she wanted to get money in people's hands quickly, she would have to send them checks up front. It was the defining moment to erode the actual intention. The irony is Blanco's original disbursement plan is now the only way the federal government lets states pay disaster grants. Louisiana's current recovery chief, Pat Forbes, says it's the biggest lesson learned from the road home. It dramatically reduces the opportunity for uh, this non-compliance at the end, you know, where you give people money and ask them to go do a thing. We actually go do the thing and track the progress the whole time. Forbes says installment payments are slower, but they helped 17,000 Louisiana homeowners rebuild from the great flood of 2016 without anyone having to repay anything for failing to follow the rules. Sherilyn Davis wonders why she didn't get that same chance. She thinks it could have helped her avoid the pitfalls of rebuilding on her own. What are we supposed to do? 
Where are we supposed to go after we then went to the people that were supposed to help us? Apparently to court, where the state has a judgment pending against her. Now there is an effort in Baton Rouge and in Washington to get these lawsuits and judgments wiped away, but it won't be easy. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development insists on taking back any grant money that wasn't used properly. HUD says the state doesn't have to sue homeowners to pay back about $140 million. It could just dip into the general fund instead. But that solution isn't likely to go over well with Louisiana taxpayers who would then have to foot the bill. The feds have agreed before to forgive debts and change rules for disaster aid. So we will just have to see if they do it this time.